Well, hello there, amazing people. We are going to talk about Linux, and we are going to talk about the reality of using Linux. I can't have to explain to you guys and girls and aliens and robots and whatnot where I'm coming from. So I started using Linux when it looked like that. So this was not my first ever Linux. This was Linux version 9. My first Linux was the Red Hat Linux 4.0 whatever so in the mid 90s and yes it was called red hat linux back then not red hat enterprise linux as you know it today i'm talking about the precursor to fedora i used linux as my main driver from about 1998 and up till 2008 then i had like a couple of years with mac os just because i want to try it out and then i went back to I want to game again. Up till then, I was gaming a little bit under Linux. Yes, you could game under Linux back then, but it was really, really... Oh, I forgot to... I fucked up my webcam. So yes, you could game under Linux uh, back then. Uh, from 2000 to 2008, I was taking education. Uh, I was partying all the time and stuff like that. So I didn't game much. But in 2010, I wanted to get back into gaming as I did in the past with like uh, Amigas and Commodore 64s. And I had some Xbox or Xboxes in that mix also and stuff like that. So for 2010, let's just say, I, I ran Mac, Linux and Windows. And, I, and, and from 2010 to 2016, 18, I, I dual booted Linux and Windows. From 2018 and up till now, I've been running Linux primarily in virtual machines. Because the job that I can do with Linux, coding and researching and messing around, don't require a graphic card. So why dual boot to get the opportunities to use a graphic card when virtual machining is so far ahead right now and so good right now that running a, a, a os in a virtual machine if you don't need the graphic card is almost identical to running it on bare metal so you can say i have had like my fair shake with linux <laughs> i probably mained linux before it was popular to maining linux i i mained linux before youtube think about that so what i'm saying here comes from Talking to people, talking to Linux users for 25 -ish years, using Linux as a desktop operating system for 25 plus years, talking to IT professionals and, and anyone that wants to listen to me about Linux, Windows and Mac OS, I love talking technology. So I, I have accumulated a lot of input. I'm not saying it's the right input, but I'm accumulating a lot of data over that, those years. I put some bullet points in here and this could end up being a long video, so get something to drink. I have some coffee beside me, it will probably get cold before I'm done here. And I have a little list over here, that's why I'm looking over there. The first thing out of the way first, it's not on the list, but it's something I really want to talk about. The telemetry data collection, spying that you hear everyone talking about Windows do and Mac OS do, they do. But so do everything that you do online. So running Linux or Haiku or BSD, for the sake of not being spied on or getting gather, gathering data upon, it's kind of like having this big, massive hill of dirt in your backyard. And you take a bucket, you fill that up, and you move that out to the front yard, and you said, now I've moved all my dirt from the backyard to the front yard. I don't need to do anything more. Just changing your operating system is not going to protect you against any of that. The only thing it's going to protect you against is Microsoft not having it. That's the only thing it's protecting you against. But if you're okay with Microsoft not having your data, but Google, YouTube, any fucking website you go on, your bank, your car, anything we do nowadays. I have a whole video about telemetry, why I'm, I'm tired about the telemetry debate. Let's get into the first point of what you would call it. Limited software. There will be software that you cannot run. It, it's just, just what it is. You have way more software selection on Windows and Mac OS than on Linux. It's just, it, it's pure facts. You just have way more options. Can't get away with that. And you also have limited hardware support. So a lot of hardware works under Linux. Back in the day, to go be a little bit uh, old guy, like back in this day that you see over there, we had to purposely buy hardware for to run Linux. So we have to, we couldn't just go and buy a motherboard because some motherboards, the sound, 
chipset worked on, but not the Ethernet chipset. Other soundboard uh, or motherboard, it was the other opposite way. Graphic cards, really, really low selection. Even, even, ext- you know, like PCI or yeah, PCI graf- uh, uh, not graphic cards, um, sound cards. Some worked, some didn't. Some monitors worked, some didn't. So we purposely bu- have to purposely build a computer to run Linux, kind of like when you're doing a Hackintosh so nowadays. So that it, you can run Linux on a lot of hardware. The the issue is the functionality of the hardware. So I have a headset here, functions of the hardware. So this has a lot of functionalities that I can program in software that is accommodating this hardware. That's not working on the Linux. So yes, I can get maybe get sound out of it. I haven't tried this out because it's a Bluetooth headset. But I can probably get sound out of it. But then I'm, you know, all of the LEDs and all of that shit that a lot of people buy their hardware because of the hardware, but also because of the adjacent or, or, or the extra features and technologies that come with that hardware. Some headphones have really good noise cancelling that is being done via uh, software. Will not work on the Linux. Uh, to go to graphic cards, HDR, ray tracing, and all of that shit is just recently came to Linux in a, in a functioning manner. It's been on Windows for years. You will always have to sacrifice not always, but most cases with hardware, you are sacrificing something for a lot of hardware. You can't just go into Walmart and just close your eyes, spin around and get the web to kick you in the butt and then where you land, that's the peripherals you buy and it will work. You have to be aware of what you are buying with your peripherals and your hardware still to Linux. Not that it won't work, but am I getting the full functionality? Like I said, back in the day, it was like, does it work or not? Now it's like, does it work or not? Yes, but do I get the functionality I want out of it? Because a lot of it nowadays is controlled by software. And here's the thing that the Linux users and, and the Linux crowd will love you to believe, and I used to be one of them, that alternatives is just as good. No. If you want Photoshop, if you want Autodesk, if you want whatever program that you're running on your Windows machine or Mac machine, no matter how great that alternative is, you want that. I keep saying this to people. If I come up to you with like say Air Jordans and I have like a Chinese knockoff and the Chinese knockoff may be better or as good as the Air Jordans, which shoe are you going to pick? Because you want Air Jordans. You've been telling me, can daddy can buy me Air Jordans for Christmas? And I'm, I'm giving you the choice between the Air Jordans and the, and the Chinese knockoffs or the knockoffs or the alternative. And the alternatives may last you longer, they may be more comfortable. If you want Air Jordans, you will pick the Air Jordan. Uh, in IT, when, when people say they want Photoshop, they don't want a fo- well, they want a photo editor, but they also want the training that comes with it. They want the the easy of access to learning the, the tools and stuff like that. When you say they want Photoshop, they want Photoshop and the ecosystem around Photoshop. If they want, let's say, uh, Autodesk versus uh, AutoCAD versus FreeCAD, they want the they want AutoCAD and the ecosystem surrounding it. So training, validation, certification, ease of access to thousands of courses that can take online, some free and some paid and stuff like that. That's what they are saying when they're saying they want that. And if the alternatives don't give them that, it don't matter how good it is. And then another one here is that a lot of Linux people still will want you to believe it's not the case, but you still have to do more work. It takes more work to run Linux. No matter how much user-friendly Linux has become, it takes more work to run Linux because of the previous mentioned states, uh, statements. Some things just don't, just don't work out of the box. Some peripherals need to be tinkered and fiddled with to get the config files. You know, have to go to and, and fi- uh, tinker and fiddle with software config files, hardware config files, just to get 50 or 80% of the functionality that you get by just plugging it in on Windows and Mac OS. Some programs you install after an update, you have to go in and fiddle with them, you know. If you want to set up easy, fair sharing, sharing, depending on the distribution, you still have at some point to go in and fiddle with a config file and stuff like that. On the Windows and Mac OS, you just right-click, share, and Bob's your uncle, that's it. Another thing is, this is what you see a lot of Linux people say. Oh my god, you're getting rid of this. I have been running the same SSD with Windows on that I'm recording right now since 2015. It started as Windows 10, it's Windows 11 now. I had five, eight, five, maybe six blue screens of death 
over all of those years. Most people that have blue screens of death under win uh, windows is because they are running things they should not run pirated shit. It's bad software, you know, badly coded software or badly coded drivers. Rarely is it Windows in of itself that breaks. It's the same with Linux. When Linux break, it's because of third party influence. So badly coded programs, badly tested updates and stuff like that. The joy with Linux is that you don't get this irritating blue screen of death. You just get a system that's not, not responsive anymore. Or you get a system that just reboot for some fucking real reason. Or you get a system that kicks you out to the terminal, the TTY. If you think you can run Linux without it uh, crashing or breaking, you're mistaken. Every operating system will and can break. It's just some people it do it does a lot for with it, and other people have almost never had it break or anything like that. And it's a combination of what they are using of software, what they are using of hardware, and how knowledgeable they are about the operating system if they are going in and tinker with the operating system. I see a lot of people tinker with Windows, Mac OS and Linux and they go into config files and they have no clue what they are doing. They are like running around in a, in, in a battlefield without a helmet and just running in circles and, and chasing their own tails. And then they, oh, grenade, what is this doing? Let's throw it this way. They have no idea what they're doing. They, they just read an article and then they call it, paste some commands into a terminal or call it, paste some things into a, a config file and they think, I know what the fuck I'm doing. And then they break something, they have no idea why it broke. You still need antiviruses under Linux. And you're worried, I can't get viruses under Linux. Yes, you can get viruses and worms and stuff like that under Linux. They're just not that widely used. So this is like a case scenario. This depends on what you, the case that you, uh, your use case. But if you are sharing files or access to your computer with anyone else, it's a good idea to have an antivirus scanner because you can maybe not get a, a virus, but if you are downloading a file and putting it on a thumb drive and giving it to Bob, an accountant that's running Windows, and now he has unicorns and rainbows shitting all over his screen, you are the issue. You should have caught that before you shared the files with. Let's say you are, you are um, sharing a, a directory on your folder and good old Jasmine, you know, the secretary, now she's getting fucking penis pictures sent to her screen all the time from crazy old fucking oil shikes in, in Dubai or something like that that wants to marry her because you infected her system. And I, I, I know and this is something that drives me nuts. I know a lot of Linux people say, oh, that's not my problem. They should do it themselves. They should, if they are not wanting Linux, they should scan the files I'm giving them and stuff like that. Yeah, it's like you being sick and going into like, let's say a mall and just coughing everyone's in, into everyone's face say, haha you should just not have stayed you should have stayed home or you should have wear like a fucking hazmat suit and stuff like that it's not my problem that i'm sick and infest infecting everyone take some accountability here's another one getting help is harder i kind of talked about that previously also it's just harder to get good help on the linux there is way better help and documentation on the Windows and Mac OS. Windows and Mac OS, if you go on to learn Windows and stuff like that, I think we can do, let's do that here. You can become a certified IT professional from this site, one-stop shop. And there's other massive avenues where you can get paid and unpaid training with your Windows problems, your Mac problems and stuff like that. Red Hat and, and OpenSUSE and Canonical have something like this, but it's not nearly as good as this here. I have not found any Linux documentation, not even the Arts Wiki, that is as good to train people in the technologies as Microsoft and Apple is doing. And here the thing, the Arts Wiki, it's like saying that, uh, 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 you know, if you're driving a car, that you have to go and read the, the mechanical documentation to your car. So you have to understand, you go to your mechanic shop and you get the, the, the repair manual and you look at that because the arts vegan is a repairman the arts vegan is for it professionals or it enthusiasts to learn how to manage a system this here will teach the everyday joe and josephine how to do this shit. another thing that you have to remember about linux it's made purposely made for servers iot devices watches phones and it professionals 
if you want to say Android is Linux, as a lot of people want to do. So I'm giving you that bone today. What do I mean by that? What is the main focus of Linux? Where is all the money being poured into Linux development? What is all, where is all the, not all, but most of the developers coming into Linux developing for Linux 4? If you look at the, 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 the top contributors for the Linux kernel, it's like Huawei, Intel, AMD, and stuff like that. And it's not for, for desktop solutions, it's for server solutions. It's server technologies that comes first with Linux. And then you have people like Elementary OS, Pop OS to some degree, that try to make Linux more user-friendly, more desktop-oriented. It's like taking a pick and making it into a prom queen, putting a dress on and lipstick on it. Underneath the pretty interfaces, the more user-friendly interfaces we have on, the, on Linux nowadays, like GNOME and KDE is sometimes better than a fucking running Windows and, and Mac OS from a usability standpoint, if you ask me. But beneath all of that, it's still a server and IT professional operating system. And you say, well, Windows is also... Nah, Windows is... If you, if you, again, if you look at Windows, there's a reason why they have a line that is specifically made for servers, IT professionals, and IoT devices and stuff like that called Windows IoT, Windows Enterprise, Windows C, call it what you will. And then you have Windows Home and Professional. Windows Home and Professional is not the same as Windows Server and so on and so on. Windows Server is, or, and that, you know, the IT Pro versions of Windows is, is almost always running one generation behind what you get on your desktop at home, so Windows Home and Windows Professional. And Windows Professional is a little bit of a weird name it's just windows with a little bit of added administrative functionalities to it so it would be windows professional something that you know you would use like i use it at work and stuff like that it would be what you, what your accountant would be having and stuff like that and you may run it at home to get those extra uh, administrative functionalities like i run windows professional at home also so i can customize the usability of windows a little bit more but in reality linux is more I like the Windows Enterprise versions, the Windows Server versions, than Windows Home and Professional. Because the way Windows develop Windows Server and, and on those technologies is vastly different than the way they, they develop Windows Desktop. It's two different target groups, and they know that. So some things that goes into the Windows, that's called a Windows Server, will only stay in Windows Server and probably only work in Windows Server in some instances. And some may be useful for the consumer and the other way around. Some things that are being done for the consumer may be useful on the Windows Server, but they are still two separate identities. They are still two separate things. Features, new technologies, even if you're running bleeding edge uh, distributions like Arts, uh, uh, rolling releases like Tumbleweed, uh, and aggressive updating releases like Fedora, you will still not get the latest technologies right away. You will get the latest Linux technologies, but the latest Linux technologies is catered towards the IoT server professional market. So that would be faster SQL searches. It would be faster, you know, better file management, memory management, CPU management, stuff like that. And yes, it could benefit you on the desktop. Not everything is black and white. So you will get that first. But like I said before, gaming technologies, if you're a gamer, you are years behind on Linux versus Windows with what is accessible to you out of the box. Proper graphic card driver support takes months before they get properly implemented into Linux. AMD is a little bit better than NVIDIA, so I'm generalizing a lot here. You just have to acknowledge this, and I know a lot of Linux people hate, hate this notion, but it's the truth. Back in the day, we had to wait years before we got Technolo technologies to Linux. Like, it, it could take like a year before a new graphic card was even fucking working under Linux. A, a year, a year, six months, or something like that. Nowadays, if NVIDIA comes out with a new graphic card, it kind of works. But, and then, like, in two or three months down the line, it works as good as under Windows. And then, like I said, HDR, DSLR, uh, ray tracing, upscaling technologies, free sync, G sync, all of those things. I know. So a lot of those work right now, uh, or work kinda, but they didn't do it for the longest time, where if you were a gamer and you want those technologies, you're buying a fucking graphic card that costs as much as a second-hand car, and it, and it gives you all of these amazing technologies. Why the fuck are you not going to use them? Of course you're going to use them. Part of the reasons why people buy new graphic cards is to get 
uh, you know, get ray tracing. It is to get DSLR and, and, and upscaling, to get FreeSync, G-Sync and stuff like that. Why would you not use that when you're paying so much money for a graphic card? Then you could just buy a higher end of the latest generations graphic card. So you have to be aware that when the new technolo mainstream technology come, it will more than likely take, let's just say on average six months before it's fully integrated into Linux at best. Online gaming is a no-go. It's getting better. Proton and, and Valve is working on getting Antitseed into um, work on Linux and, and on a current level. So it will probably come in a couple of years or in six months and stuff like that. But we have had that under Windows for years. Like again, like I said, features will come slower. And if you look at the most played games, a good portion of those cannot even be played on Linux, or you have to hack your way in to do it and you can, well, get banned in some instances if they see that you're running Linux because you are using a lesser acknowledgeable entity or you are hacking, you know, running the entity in Vine or something like, you know, you get what I'm saying here. A lot of the popular games that you want to play, and, and, and online games are one of the most popular games uh, genre out there right now people love online competitive games they love it a lot of them don't work on the linux or are not working satisfactorily on the linux in the way that you can get it to work but you may get banned because they think you're not using the correct entity and stuff like that so i hope this helped you guys and girls out see you all later bye bye